former NFL star O.J. Simpson charged with his ex-wife's murder. Uh, and again, it was the trial of the century. It's the law of the land and the land where nothing is more important than the law. But the debate over Bush v. Gore goes on to this day, not least among some of the justices themselves. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 court cases that changed America. The Supreme Court in 1824 provided an answer within the framework of a case known as Gibbons v. Ogden, or more simply, the Steamboat Case. For this list, we're looking at court rulings from the United States that had a significant historical impact in shaping the country that exists today. Now please take your seats. Court is now in session. Court has just ruled part of that law is unconstitutional. This is being described immediately now as a big win for advocates of gay rights. Number 10, Bush v. Gore. For the last 80 years, the Florida court has always ruled that the right to participate in the democratic process is more important than a voter's ability to follow instructions. The 2000 U.S. presidential election resulted in one of the most controversial and divisive legal decisions in the nation's history. In Florida, the vote was deemed too close to call, and the Florida Supreme Court called for a recount. But the United States Supreme Court overturned the order and sided in favor of George W. Bush, effectively declaring him the next president, which caused concern for many critics who believed the court had overstepped. The standard is whether or not the intent of the voter is reflected by the ballot. Gore lost with grace, but after the events of 9-11 and the war on terror, many wondered what would have been in store for America had the court decided differently. But the debate over Bush v. Gore goes on to this day, not least among some of the justices themselves. Number 9. Obergefell v. Hodges Now gay marriage is back at the court. And this time, it deals with if states have to recognize their legality. While many countries around the world have embraced same-sex marriage for years, it wasn't until 2015 that the U.S. Supreme Court legalized the right of people of the same sex to marry, making it a fundamental one. There was a glimmer of hope among uh, the advocates for same-sex marriage under the law that Chief Justice Roberts might find his own path. Named after James Obergefell, a man who sought to have his marriage to another man recognized in Ohio, the Supreme Court ruled in a 5-4 to four split that same-sex marriage was legal under the Constitution's 14th Amendment. Citing the amendment's due process and equal protection clauses, the case overturned the 1971 ruling against same-sex marriage in Baker v. Nelson. In 1970, they'd applied in Hennepin County, but were turned down in a case that eventually went to the state Supreme Court, where they lost. Number 8. Marbury v. Madison Literally the last day of Adams' presidency, he was busy signing commissions for these federal judgeships. This case was of vital importance to American history, as it declared that the U.S. Supreme Court had the authority to overturn laws made by Congress, and, perhaps more significantly, awarded it the power to interpret and lay down the law. The upshot of the case was that Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that the court had the power to review, uphold, and strike down executive actions pursuant to the Judiciary Act of 1789, and in doing this, to strike down part of that federal law. In this case, the court unanimously sided against Marbury, who had brought forth a case petitioning for the court to force the Secretary of State to give him an appointed position that had been promised to him by the previous administration. The decision stated that the law allowing the Supreme Court to do so was unconstitutional and therefore would not be honored. President Jefferson won his battle against Marbury and his companions. They never received their commissions. Chief Justice John Marshall, however, won the war to establish the Supreme Court as the final arbiter of the meaning of the Constitution. Number 7. Citizens United v. Federal Election Commission Vote for this guy! Vote for this guy! Aren't you tired of this stuff? Acknowledging the disproportionate influence that corporate money can play in the outcome of political campaigns, the U.S. had sought to control what was termed electioneering communication. The radical decision in Citizens United v. Federal Election Commission reversed that trend. Leading up to the Democratic primaries in 2008, conservative lobbying group Citizens United wished to run and advertise a disparaging movie about Hillary Clinton. We all know we're going up against some pretty powerful forces that will say, do, and spend whatever it takes to stop me and stop you. The Supreme Court decided they could. 
With this decision, the Supreme Court granted the same First Amendment rights to corporations and unions as to individual citizens. The subsequent rise of super PACs has allowed wealthy corporations and individuals to attempt to influence elections in a manner that may have serious and far-reaching repercussions. And after today's ruling, the corporations will only need a few more years of inflaming people before the message suddenly shifts to, everything's great. Number 6. New York Times v. Sullivan Back in the 1960s, the New York Times made a mistake, effectively stating untrue facts about the police force of Montgomery, Alabama in relation to Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern United States civil rights movements. An editorial writer named Grover Hall for the, another Montgomery paper saw that and wrote an editorial where he called it lies, lies, and lies. The police commissioner, L.B. Sullivan, sued them for libel, a form of defamation. However, the court ruled in favor of the New York Times, stating that a free press is necessary for a free country. This case set the precedent that in order to be found guilty of defamation, one must prove that there was an intention to harm, known as malice. Number 5. Dred Scott v. Sanford A black race has, for more than a century, been regarded as beings of an inferior order, and they have no rights which the white man is bound to respect. This is the story of Dred Scott, an African-American slave who moved with his owner to a free territory. After the death of his owner, Scott was inherited by his former owner's widow, and he attempted, unsuccessfully, to purchase freedom for himself and his family. He filed a lawsuit, however, stating that as he lived in a territory where slavery was outlawed, he was entitled to his freedom. They pointed to colonial laws in the text of the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. The Fifth Amendment says that no one can be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. The Supreme Court's decision stated that all African Americans, free or not, were not considered American citizens, and therefore had no right to bring about a lawsuit. This decision is consistently listed among the worst in the history of the Supreme Court. So essentially, the procedural basis on which they lost was that they were citizens of nowhere. Number four, United States v. Nixon. I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. Nixon actually said that, and the Supreme Court said, well, we'll just have to see about that. The Watergate special prosecutor subpoenaed Nixon to hand over several documents as evidence, specifically tapes he had recorded. Citing executive privilege, Nixon refused. The case went down in history as the Supreme Court placed clear and defined limits on how far the president could go with regards to executive privilege. The case set the groundwork for what would ultimately end in Nixon's resignation, 16 days after the court handed down its decision. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Number three, Miranda v. Arizona. Go ahead, it's four declamatory sentences followed by a question for a total of 57 words. Okay, uh, it's, look, it obviously starts with, you have the right to remain silent. I know you've heard this before. And, and then, um, it, it, I think it sounds something like, uh, the famous Miranda rights are named after Ernesto Miranda, who confessed under police questioning to a horrible crime. However, at no time had Miranda been informed of his right to remain silent and to have an attorney present. It's an idea so obvious, you can't believe there was ever a time that we didn't have it. While the Arizona Supreme Court ruled that Miranda's confession was admissible, the U.S. Supreme Court disagreed. This not only set a valuable precedent, but also gave countless cop shows the familiar phrase, read him his rights. Read his rights. Twice. In terms of the rights of criminals, Miranda v. Arizona built on the earlier trial of Gideon v. Wainwright, which stated that all defendants had the right to legal counsel. Here is what we said. An accused person cannot effectively defend himself. Without counsel, the accused cannot possibly evaluate the lawfulness of his arrest. Number two, Brown v. The Board of Education of Topeka. The 1896 court case of Plessy v. Ferguson was a troubling one, as it was that case that declared separate but equal standards to be right, effectively legalizing segregation in the United States. The Plessy decision introduced a new phrase into the language, separate but equal. 
21 states would soon pass segregation laws under the protection of Plessy. It wasn't until 1954 that several parents went to court again, making the case that separate but equal was a myth and that African Americans were being treated as second-class citizens. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. The court unanimously ruled in the parents' favor, stating that the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment made separate but equal unconstitutional, proving to be a landmark win in the history of the civil rights movement. I felt so validated. It was pure joy to go into that classroom for me. Uh, I mattered. Before we rule on our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Planned Parenthood League of Connecticut's executive director, Griswold, and one of its doctors, Buxton, were arrested and charged under a Connecticut law that forbade the use of contraceptives by anyone, including married couples. Let me join the others in once again saying that today is a milestone in the long struggle to protect our children from tobacco. We've heard that we couldn't survive before when we had 700,000 members and when we had 17 million members. Evolution was about to go on trial with an unusual cast of characters. A group of civic boosters trying to put their little town on the map. McCulloch versus Maryland entailed of necessity the question, who is supreme, the federal government or the government of the several states. Number one, Roe v. Wade. He actually researched the history of abortion, and his visceral response was, the state ought not to be telling doctors how to regulate pregnancy. The Constitution is very clear on the laws of men, but it's somewhat hazy about women. In the midst of feminism's second wave, many women sought to control their own bodies and futures by obtaining the right to seek an abortion. The Supreme Court's decision stated that it was a woman's right to seek an abortion within the first trimester. Although second trimester abortions could be regulated and third trimester abortions could be banned by the state altogether. Citing clauses under both the 9th and the 14th Amendments to the Constitution. Though these regulations have since evolved through other landmark cases. But at the core of the case was whether or not they should overturn Roe v. Wade the 1973 decision that legalized abortion and made a woman's, a woman's reproductive choices a fundamental right. This milestone ruling has been the subject of intense debate, and the issue continues to be contentious even in the 21st century. My view is, regardless of whether you think prohibiting abortion is good or whether you think prohibiting abortion is bad, regardless of how you come out on that, mm. my only point is the Constitution does not say anything about it. Do you agree with our list? What landmark cases did we miss? For more top tens about history and pop culture published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Your, uh, your leadership on this, you know, is uh, changing, changing the country.